Yes, sir, in the back. Black shirt. Hi, my name is Nishan. I'm a master's student here at the Kennedy School of Government. And I'm interested in your thoughts on how to navigate the politics of school reform, specifically in the inner cities. As you know, inner cities have a tendency to uh, uh, suffer the, the most severe consequences of failing schools. And you also mentioned how inner city uh, legislators have a tendency to oppose school choice, although it would be in the best interest of their constituents. Now, my question for you would be, do you think this presents an opportunity for Republicans to make inroads in, area that, in areas that have been traditionally Democratic strongholds? And if so, uh, what do you think can be done at a grassroots level to build support in the inner cities that could counteract the strength of the teachers' unions? Thank you. Well, as far as Republican opportunity, I think if there is some, it's incidental or, 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 or just should become a consequence of your policy but not a driver of your philosophy. Because, you know, the fact is that in the inner cities, the habit of voting Democrat has been going on for so long that if you go into it thinking, okay, listen, I'm advocating for things that are really in their interest. And in fact, if you look at polling in New Jersey, the place where charter schools have the greatest level of support are in Essex County, Hudson County, Passaic County, which are three of our most urban counties, Newark and Essex County, Jersey City and Hudson County, Patterson and Passaic County. Those families, regardless of party, get it. Now, if you make your goal the idea that you're going to turn them to vote Republican, then I think you're looking in the wrong direction. What I think is much more possible is for them to pressure their Democratic representatives and say, we've had enough of being taken for granted. We've had enough of listening to the fact that you care about our children but are willing to do nothing for them. And I think if I, as a Republican, decide that I'm doing this because I want to try to turn folks from Democrats to Republicans in inner cities, my motivation is wrong, and as a result, my approach will be flawed. My motivation's got to be change those schools. I don't care whether Democrats change them, Republicans change them, independents change them, I could care less. I'm about changing those schools. Now, if ultimately, 15, 20 years from now, that leads to some gains in those areas for my party, fabulous. But I, I, I'm not optimistic about that, and I don't think that's the pathway to success. I think the pathway to success is to go to people in the inner cities and say to them, march on your legislator's office. Demand better. Because for some folks, you know, just their history would make them not want to vote Republican. It's just in some ways, in some areas of our state and of our country, their history doesn't permit them to consider voting Democrat. I mean, just, you know, you grow up in a house where your parents are voting Democrat all the time, they're telling you to vote for Democrat. And you, it's very hard to break that paradigm, and I don't think we should waste our time worrying about it, and I don't. I mean, I campaigned in Newark a lot in 2009, and like I said before, my party thought I was nuts. They're like, you're not going to win there. I go, of course I'm not going to win there. But when I do win the state, I want them to know that I'm their governor too. And the only way to prove that is to show up. So if, incidentally, some political gains happen, I'm not opposed to that. But I think that if that's the way you're thinking you're going to solve the problem, it's going to take too long to solve it that way. I have to move the hearts and minds of the people that they're most likely to vote for, and I have to work with them to move those hearts and minds. And that's the fastest way to get it done. And so I'd rather put aside the interests of my party in favor of the interests for educational change and make Democrats understand through the pressure from their constituency that this is not only an educational imperative, but it's a political imperative for them because people are demanding it. Now, neither of these are going to be easy to accomplish because of that historical redundancy of voting and because most people in the inner cities are working two and three jobs to keep a roof over their head. So to bring them into finding the time and motivating to get involved politically in that way is also a challenge, as it is across our entire country in terms of apathy. But in our inner cities, a lot of times it's not apathy. A lot of times it's literally not having the time because for people who are struggling in this economy, they're working two, three jobs to, to just make, it, make, it, make ends meet. So 
I understand your conversation, your, your approach in this conversation, but I think that my approach is going to be to try to persuade common sense, compassionate Democrats that enough's enough, that it shouldn't be a partisan issue, and that I'm not looking to make partisan gain out of it. The end of it, continue to represent those districts if that's what those districts want, but vote for what they need. And I care much more about that than I care about the others. So your question, and I'm not trying to say that your question implies, you know, that, that, that that's the only way to do it, but I think it's the, le the lesser effective way to do it um, if you want to try to get results more quickly than not. But it's, you're right that it's one of the real political challenges of trying to get education reform.